Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This is a uh, wonderful day for uh, Fire Mist and uh, Plumis. Of course, uh, we're, we're kicking off uh, a very new um, part of our company uh, that is an offspring of QDOT Engineering. And we're, um, we're, we're very happy that all of you could be here and sharing this day. Um, you know, every day and all day long across the United States, fire departments and other jurisdictions are getting phone calls from people that are coming home from rehab, the hospital, or other issues. And they're calling the fire departments and they're basically stating, hey, I'm coming out of rehab, or my mother's coming out of rehab, or someone, and they're going to be bedridden for a period of time. And un as unfortunate as that is, our homes and our safety devices in our homes are not set up for that situation. And this is happening all over the world, and definitely all over the United States. We're making sure, though, that they're, do they're doing what they think is the right thing for them to do. And it is. They're notifying the people that would be responding to help them in that situation. <clears throat> from a fire chief's perspective and from fire prevention perspective, when we receive those calls, it's very difficult to actually have an action that follows that call. We receive them, we take the information down, we try to console them and support them as much as we know how to do. But in reality, all we're doing is identifying the risk. We're not able to reduce that risk for those folks. Today is going to be the first time in the United States that fire prevention and the fire service will have a tool to be able to reduce and help reduce that risk. And so this is the personal protection system. It is made by our friends at Plumas. Uh, the managing director from Plumas is here. William McCant, thank you very much for coming from the UK to be with us today. So getting a little bit specific about the system that we have, we have a fire department deployable system that can be brought into a location that has somebody with a higher risk. It plugs right into the outlet. The fire department can fill it with water and it, it is then commissioned and ready to work in case it's needed. It works off of either a flame detector, a smoke detector, or a heat detector. When it's deployed, it will then protect that room that that is in, and of course we would want to deploy it in the room where the person with the higher risk would be. If, for some reason, it would actually activate, it sends 1.6 gallons per minute of water into the room and keeps that room tenable, most of the time it will actually suppress the fire, but it will maintain tenability for that person to survive and have the fire department come and save them. So it doesn't change the response at all other than the fact that this system will actually call the fire department when it deploys. So we're getting early activation, we're getting increased tenability, and we're getting summoning of emergency forces. And that in one package helps us lower the risk. So what I'd like to do is I'll bring some of my texts up <coughs> before I lose my voice <laughs> and we'll show you exactly how this system works. We are going, we're in the garage because I wanted to spray water. Okay? On behalf of the fire chief, I decided not to have a real fire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what we will do is we're going to actually spray some water here. Um, we won't get anybody wet. But, again, so how does this compare to other things? Well, a sprinkler system typically puts out somewhere around 20 gallons a minute. This system puts out 
1.6 gallons a minute. So it's a, about 10 times less water. The whole idea here, though, is to buy time of tenability because the person we're protecting isn't able to evacuate. Smoke alarms, which we are 100% in favor of, by the way, are an alerting device to allow people to realize there's something wrong going on in their house and then get out and call the fire department. If you can't get out, the smoke alarm lets you know there's something wrong, but there you are. So, what this system does, once it picks up the, the information through a smoke detector, a heat detector, or flame detector, it will then deploy again and call. Now, the folks, the wonderful folks at your county control, um, at, at the communication center, what a stressful job they have. But, we did not want to actually deploy that today and have them get that signal. So we have it uh, scheduled right to a cell phone here. So when it deploys, we'll get, we'll get a message on the cell phone that it deployed. And so it, it's simulating going to the 911 caller. So um, let's go ahead and get this ready to go. Um, I don't want to get cameras wet. It, it, it's a fine mist, so just want to let you know. So, this is basically houses everything that's needed to make the system work except for the water. The water's in the tank behind here, and it's enough for 10 minutes of flow. Okay, so, so 10 minutes of, of this flowing is right here in the tank. It plugs into the normal outlet in your house, and it runs off of a battery for that 10 minutes. If we lose power, it tells us over that text. If it deploys, it tells us when we, when we do that. Um, it will be able to be um, programmed by the local fire department as to what the right numbers are to call when it deploys. So, what we have here, don't push it, don't push it. <laughs> you, you never want to stand in front of the, uh, we've done that a couple times. So this is an off-the-shelf heat detector. It actually talks to the module that's on there. It is a wireless setup. So there's no wires needed. You just have to actually install this in the same room that you're trying to protect. So we're not going to go through the, uh, we're going to do a very small test just to not fill, but you'll get to see the actual video of the system working. Mr. Bullet. All right, so it's gonna be a little bit loud. <laughs> And so, and so that is the actual system uh, functioning. You can see how quickly it goes when that heat detector goes off. It's almost immediate, and it's taking care of the, whatever problem is making that heat detector go off. Why do we typically use heat detectors? Has anybody ever burnt toast and had their smoke alarm go off? Yes, we get false uh, alerts with smoke alarms. They're built that way to be that sensitive. When we use heat, the actual room temperature at the ceiling has to rise a certain amount. And that lets us know with high probability that there is a fire getting started in that room. And so we use the heat detector. It was a <laughs> <laughs> We use that heat detector to, to verify with a very high confidence level that there is a fire building in that room, and we activate very quickly to get it at its most incipient stage, the smallest stage that we can possibly do. Yes? The cell phone alert, did that take it, it didn't. 
for the text to go, it has to run for at least, or the heat detector has to go off for at least 15 seconds, and I didn't want to get the cameras wet. So. Well, but if you'd like to actually see that, I just don't want to get all the, all the cameras first. We'll, yeah. we'll be happy to do that. Um, so what I would like to do is uh, ask uh, Chief uh, Michaels to come up. And uh, what we would like to do today, this is the first system in the United States. And uh, we have hope, great hopes of, it's now built by the wonderful folks at Plumas. We have hopes that we will be able to build it here. But what we're going to do is, um, since we're York City based and uh, York, York City proud, um, what I would like to do is probably have uh, our, our state rep, uh, Kevin Shriver, come up also. And William, if you would, would help us. And so, for the first PPS system in the United States, we would like to present that to the York City Fire Department. Thank you. Awesome. So, anybody have any other questions or comments or thoughts? Would you like to say yeah, something, Chief? Just, please. Uh, thank you. Thank sure. you. Um, and I'll, just a few comments. Uh, when Rick had contacted me some time ago and explained the system, sent some literature, some videos, uh, he immediately had my attention. Um, see how the system works. Uh, and, and some of the things you hit on, one thing too, to, uh, and, and I believe you were getting at it, um, in the city we're very fortunate. We have some of the best trained, well-equipped firefighters around. Uh, they can be on the scene in three minutes. They're outstanding firefighters. But if a room hits flashover, a building hits flashover, there's nothing they can do. All the equipment we send, all this stuff, it, it's almost impossible to survive. Absolutely. This is going to prevent flashover. Uh, this is going to get these well-trained, well-equipped firefighters a chance to get in and do what they do best, to, to protect lives, to save lives. Um, it's the bottom line. It, it's, it, if you look at the studies today, within three minutes, a, a room can reach flashover. With modern furniture, uh, the, the way they're equipped, you know, it, it's flashing right as we pull up on the scene. Um, and another thing this is doing is giving us that early, in, early warning. You know, we preach smoke detectors, and like you said, we're still, please, putting smoke detectors up. We have smoke detectors. We'll install them for you um, because that gives us an early warning. This, again, is going right away. Someone's being notified there's a problem. Someone's being notified that it activated, uh, and it's going to give us a chance to get there and uh, make a difference. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank You're you. very welcome. I just want to say it's about time. Rick has been talking about this for so many years now. Um, no, this is awesome. York has been you know, York has been a uh, first for a lot of things. First capital, arguably, we, we can claim that. Uh, first uh, first utterance of the United States of America when the Articles of Confederation were drafted. First delicious peppermint patties, and uh, now hopefully the first uh, deployment of, of this system. And obviously, we hope it would never come to this, but I'm sure first life saved with it too. And hopefully the first place in America to manufacture this system, too, which would equally be excellent. But I just want to say congratulations, and I think it's really impressive, too, just to stop for a moment and think of the innovation that's occurring right here. Um, as Chief said, you know, uh, our guys are on the scene, uh, they are prompt, and they know how to do their job really well. But what this does is it buys them that, that extra uh, cushion. It ensures that, um, that there is the opportunity uh, to save a life and to give them the extra time to get in there and hopefully... Uh, a take care of business as they as they typically do, but I just think the innovation uh, unto itself is pretty impressive, and, and obviously want to thank our, our friends from the UK, thank Rick and his entire team. I know you guys have really been working on this for for uh, a fair amount of time, and I think it's awesome. I think it's very very cool. So congratulations, thank you, and thank you for donating it to thank York City too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> William is the uh, managing director of Plumas UK, which. Basically, not only this system, but the uh, the Automist system and Smart Scan, which you've seen some of that, and if not, make sure that you go to uh, the Plumas website and, and see that, or the Firemist website. But uh, e either way, um, um, they are innovators, and they're going to be saving uh, you know millions and millions of people long term. So, William. So I think the the. The curious thing to mention here is that uh, the whole development of the company was based on feedback from the fire brigade in the UK, in the, uh, UK originally. So the whole invention was basically 
the fire department of the UK that these, the original Juventus visited were saying if only we could have a sprinkler that could be retrofitted. And this is what kicked up the, the, the company in the first place. And then a few years later, the, the fire brigade came back to us and said, if only you could make it portable. And they were pestering us, just saying, can you please make it portable? We, we need a portable version. And the, the UK fire brigade has been well known for their progressiveness in working towards prevention. Uh, over the last 10 years, they've been very successful in doing that, uh, to the point that they source and install for free smoke alarms in properties for 10 years already. And this is their next step in terms of where not prevention in terms of early warning is important, but there are some cases where early warning is just not enough and you have to be able to uh, control the fire and buy time until the fire service can uh, uh, turn up. So it's really the fire departments there that have made us come up with this. Yeah, it wasn't an innovation out of the blue. It was a clear need and a feedback and that's why they're already testing and, and using it in the field already. So we have to thank the fire, back to the fire departments here for that. So anybody have any questions that they would like answered by any one of us? I have a question. So when this went off previously, it shot straight out. But getting up close, I guess, does yeah. it directionally point towards the, the heat source? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so the whole idea is that the, the original fixed system, you can pick what is the, the bias of flow that you want for each nozzle. And the way we've made it here is on this specific version, is that you can pick what is the direction you want most of the flow to go to, if you want that to happen. So a lot of the applications, which are the, especially the flame uh, detection based one, is where you have somebody which is immobile on a bed or a chair, for example, and you know that they are the highest risk because they are risk to themselves, usually a heavy smoker, mm -hmm. uh, an addict that will not be able to react if there's a fire on themselves. So they want a very fast uh, time of response and a directional mist so that you're, you're extinguishing that fire even before it develops because you know that you, you won't have much time of reaction. Suppression is just not uh, enough. You'd have to have extinguishment pretty quick so, so, uh, as well. So. As it's being uh, configured here, it is as uh, an extinguishment system more than a suppression one. Yeah. Great. And uh, so we can certainly talk uh, uh, when you have other questions. We're happy to, uh, believe me, happy to talk <laughs> about these systems because they're so innovative and, and, and so applicable to the risks that are out there. And so we can talk about how they really work and, and, and the few limitations that there are, of course, because every engineered system has a limitation with it also, and it's very important as fire protection engineers for us to understand the limitations and, and ha so we can maximize the deployment of these systems. But the, the physics works. We, uh, we, we continue to burn and we continue to be amazed on how well this system actually works. and. Uh, so we're very uh, proud to uh, have it here. I believe this is one of many that will, that will be uh, around the area. We would hope that uh, different organizations, uh, some of our civic organizations might be able to get behind this movement and be able to, for those departments that can't afford one, that they would be able to somehow subsidize those kinds of things. Yes, sir. You said it's a 20 gallon tank? Um, it is a, it's a 10 minute tank, it, uh, this is 15, in 16 gallons, 16 okay. gallons ish. Okay. Yeah. Could that be supplemented with domestic wine? Um, yeah. it, yeah, it, 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 it has the capacity to have that happen. Um, the idea here is for point protection of of, of a uh, risk that is not going to necessarily be there long term. So, so that's, that's the advantage of this actual system, is to be able to be self-deployed by the fire department and cover that risk short term. We have solutions for the longer term in smart scan that then again work off the domestic water. But physically, there's no reason why this could not be designed that way too. Great question. So if you'd like, um, we'll deploy this yet again. Uh, we'll, we'll let it, quote, latch um, more than 12 or 15 seconds. 
that it will run as long as we want it to run. For that, Chief, I'm going to need the keys back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for being here. Please have some great coffee, green bean coffee. It's delicious. And some Glazen donuts, right? Yes. Donuts from Glazen, all York City businesses. And uh, thank you very, very much for coming today. Guess what? As the firefighters will tell you, wet stuff doesn't burn. But this is this is the cleanup in case you know afterwards. The difference between a sprinkler um, and, and again, we're very pro sprinkler. Don't get me wrong. It's not a. It, it may be an either or. It's but it needs to be one of them. This can be cleaned up with a mop, and arguably, in the right situation, is still habitable. If a sprinkler head goes off in here, I guarantee you it's not habitable for the day. So, he just called me too. And he just got a phone call from the system. And it hung up. So, so any, anybody have any other questions or want to see something different? Uh, this system will be on display probably, oh, give us a week. Um, at 280 at the front of this uh, building, uh, we'll have a display. Anybody can come in and take a look at it during normal operating hours. <laughs> and uh, it is, uh, it, it's going to be ready for uh, the York City Fire Department to deploy. And I know uh, in talking with uh, uh, William that we'll be having a few more um, on their way over here also. So again, thank you everybody and uh, thanks for the wonderful day. Well, yeah, he wants the keys. Chief was just telling me a story that this yeah, would have we, actually... We, told, we had a fire back in September. There was two fatalities. And, and oftentimes when you have a fatality, it, it's handicapped people or elderly people that just, you know, have, have trouble get moving. Um, and, and that was the case in our fire in September. Uh, you know, the, the gentleman had trouble health-wise, was not able to move quickly. The wife was helping him to get out of the home, and they were both overcome by the... Uh, by the smoke and the, and the fire. Um, again, some, and we were there quick. I mean, we were there with two minutes that day. Um, you know, but again, that's how quick, you know, something like this would have gave that uh, extra protection. So they're, they're the type, again, where, where you look at the fire fatalities and, and the people that are getting overcome, you know, it's often those ones that came, I think there was one last night up in Harrisburg area. Uh, sounds like an elderly person that couldn't get out. Um, so again, this is, has potential. It definitely gives a potential, and uh, you know, to keep that fire from flashing over. And it's another tool in your toolbox. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's the key. It, it's another active tool. Yeah. So, again, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> <Back>. yep. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you.